Well, we are just getting started here feeding cows. Uh, if you followed along in the last video, we had a small breakdown of the combine. There's a drive hub for the grain unload that the shear pin goes through that uh, wore out and broke here on Thanksgiving Day. I ordered the parts here yesterday and hopefully those parts that we ordered came in here or come in this morning and we can run over and get those uh, parts that we need so that we can finish up the last 60 to 65 acres of corn. So as you can see, we have some snow on the ground. Uh, the first bit of snow that we got was uh, Monday night into Tuesday, and we had to put the tire chains on here. Uh, Tuesday morning, I didn't put them on until about halfway through uh, feeding cows. And we don't, once we put them on, we don't take them off. And I'm afraid that they're gonna be on here until Easter. So we've got a new set on the 7710 and this set that we have on the 7720, um, they're not gonna make it the whole year here. They are wore out. Um, there is some breaks in them. I did have to put a master link or a uh, repair link in one of the sections here when we put them on oh, the other day as you can see these sections are getting wore uh, so I've got to get a new set for that um, we just there is days we don't need the chains but the last thing I want to do is have to put chains on first thing in the morning so we better go ahead and start loading up some feed here all right we have both mixer wagons running and we're actually loading in the last ingredient right now which is bmr silage i always get a question you know what is bmr bmr stands for brown midrib it is a um, it's more highly digestible than the regular uh conventional corn silage and the cow gets a little bit more out of it than conventional silage. Uh, this BMR silage that we're feeding now out of bunk one was chopped here this fall. We had uh, silage in the bunk next to it that we had from uh, last year and we fed that while this was uh, ferment. This bunk here that we're digging out of right now uh, was the first bunk we filled and we started filling that or we got it full about the I don't know maybe the 20th of September or so somewhere thereabouts and it um, cooked out for you know maybe five weeks or so you want this uh, haylages and corn silages and whatever like that um, it's best if they can ferment before you feed them uh, a little bit more for that mixer so we're just going to keep at it here we've got um, a little bit more to put on that red mixer and then we've got to put oh there's like 12,000 or something like that on the I gotta look at my list which is right to my right here get about oh, what is there there's almost 14,000 pounds of BMR silage that I have to put on the white mixer wagon so um, we'll keep at it here the, um, the other day I got a question on how this payloader has been and this is a 624k loader and we bought this about three months ago it was sometime in like the end of august or so uh, we bought this and this was a used machine it actually came in off of a lease a three-year lease and the company that leased it plows snow and they get new machines every three years and their three-year lease was up here and 
probably the end of the snow season, May or so, because um, there was a few of these machines that we were watching for a little bit, watching for a while here at Five Star or from Five Star. And when we bought this machine, it had 305 hours on it, basically brand new. So we have, of course, tripled the hours now on this machine. This machine has 930 hours on it, and we've put 620 some odd hours on it in a mere three months. Now the bucket that is on this loader is what you call a rollout bucket. It tips at the cutting edge. This is a standard lift payloader. You can get a high lift, which the arms are longer and it lifts up higher. And you can also get a um, extended high lift. The high lift lifts about a foot higher than the standard uh, lift machine that we have, but 12 inches is wouldn't be enough to uh, get done what we want to get done as far as loading trucks and whatever. We want to be able to round a truck rate right up, and with a standard, well, with a high lift machine and a, with a standard bucket, you just can't get the uh, lift height out of it. So the rollout bucket gains you about three feet of dump height because it's actually dumping at the cutting edge. Now we ended up buying or ordering a, um, a new bucket. We ordered a push out bucket which was going to take like 16 weeks to build and we should see that here before the end of the year. And the push out bucket, that bucket the back end it's hinged at the top and the back end of the bucket uh, pushes out forward um, so we're kind of anxious to see what that bucket's all about um, it's going to hold maybe a yard and a half or so more than uh, this bucket does so we'll be able to gain a little bit of capacity this has a five yard bucket on it and it holds about now, like that last ingredient that I dumped on, it holds about 6,000 pounds of that rounded right up. So we'll go ahead and uh, feed these two loads off and then we'll start the loading process all over again here.
Well, we're on our way into Syracuse to pick up some parts. This will allow us to kill some time while we're waiting for Kaz to get the parts in. This field here, uh, that's the corn that we have left to do. And that is right next to the house that had the exotic plants growing in the back lawn uh, that we seen while we were chopping last year. So I've got um, a sway, it's almost like a sway bar suspension piece at Allied Spring that they press some new bushings and pins and whatever into. So we've got to pick that up and then the UPS delivery I don't think is going to make it into CAS until about 10 o'clock and it is just a little bit after 9 right now so we'll have to give them a call as we're leaving syracuse and if they have the parts in stock we could just jog over from uh syracuse to kaz so we have the uh ram 3500 um that we're riding in right now to go pick up these parts kind of need a one-ton truck to do uh these parts pickups like this you know they're awful dealing with some awful heavy parts so i haven't quite figured out this uh screen here yet it's got so many damn functions to it that um you almost need to sit still for a half hour and figure out how everything works but um oh it's got the comfort page up there i had to turn the heated seat off and have to turn the uh, wheel. Steering wheel is getting a little hot. So I'll have to turn. We got the steering wheel. The heated steering wheel turned off now. So we'll uh, run into Allied, get the uh, parts, and then hopefully Kaz has what we need. Um, hopefully that comes in and we'll run on over and pick that stuff up. Well, we are just leaving, or have just left Allied Spring. They're usually not open on Saturdays. However, there was a couple of guys hanging around there today, and they said they were going to be there. So that allowed us to get in and pick up the part to the 900. You can barely see it right there in the back of the truck. I just got off the phone with Kaz Equipment. I figured if that stuff was in, I would just jog over from Syracuse and through uh, Fayetteville Manlius there and jump over to Kaz and grab the parts, head on back and put the combine back together and we'd be shelling corn by noontime. But they have not uh, gotten anything in from John Deere nor have they got any kind of a confirmation as to whether or not UPS is going to be delivering the one item that had to come in from out in the Midwest somewhere. There was a bushing that goes inside that pulley hub that they had to source from out in Illinois or something that was supposed to be delivered overnight on a Saturday, which is hard to get done especially this time of year being that we're into the holiday season we've got a couple of things that we're working against now we're working we're still working against covid uh the excuses that fall around that and being that we're in the holiday season uh it's just a pain in the ass to get anything done usually i feel that the year is shot from about Columbus Day all the way to the President's Day as far as dealing with the holiday season. Every time you turn around, there's something going on as to uh, these outfits not being able to uh, work up to their standards. So we're going back to the shop now. We'll work on the 900 and we'll stop into the dealership that I bought this truck from it's on the way and uh we'll see if my old truck is still there on the lot uh, we're going through the beautiful city of syracuse right now 
and uh, the dealership is just on the other side of town here and uh, that's on our way home I came in uh, in the East Syracuse the other way around and we're just going home this way so we'll stop in see if that truck is still there um, see if they've got it cleaned up anyways it, it was there the other day but it wasn't cleaned up yet so we'll pull in there here in a few minutes well here is the dealership right here that um, bought my truck from this is McGuire down in Syracuse we'll jog over to the used car lot here Let's see if we can't see if that truck is the truck that I traded in see if it's for sale here or not it was parked out back I've had this for three weeks now Oh, there it is right over there so it looks like they have it cleaned up it's setting right right in front of the building there so it's this one on the left here that is my old truck and they've got it all cleaned up and see they've got a uh, one of the used car papers in the window but I don't see any pricing on the window <laughs> kind of interested to see what they are asking for it so uh, we'll drive over to their new stuff here they only have a few trucks in their new truck lot they've got a nice TRX inside a nice orange one For a while my truck sat down here so I'm surprised to see it's already ready to be listed anyways it looks like a new truck there the black one and then um, we have a uh, gray night edition 2500 looks like that just came in then we have a couple of uh, three-quarter ton look like gas engines there and then of course we have some half ton so we're gonna go ahead and get back to the shop we'll have to keep an eye on this dealership for a while and see what they are going to be asking for that truck that I traded in got this panhandler over here he is uh, frozen right to the bone <laughs> he'd be better off if he was working somewhere than trying to hustle for dollars to support his drug habit so that's a common place for these guys to stand is right there looks like we got a guy down a ways it's probably gonna be his turn in a half hour or something so he's He's waiting to get in there. I well, we got a couple of them. That one guy's got a snowmobile jacket on. Um. <laughs> All right, we better get back to the farm. Well, we're just getting back to the shop here, and um, Allied Spring, what they did is they ended up putting in some new pins and bushings on the um, on this sway bar uh, piece here and then I got some new clamps and some new uh, rubber uh, bushings to put on this part so we'll go ahead and get this unloaded and uh, get it into the shop I do have a tunnel cover that I ended up buying for this truck so we're going to get that on here at some point in time too just so that I'm not dealing with snow and ice and whatever else like that in the back of the truck here that's just a pain in the butt when you go to pick up something like this and you have to deal with there's hardly any snow in here now but um 
if we were to get six or eight inches of snow usually the back of my truck ends up getting drifted in here pretty good so we might as well go and get this unloaded we can work on this and we'll have to wait till monday or tuesday before we see any parts for the combine today is saturday they had a little bit of a hang up because of the holiday and i think um well i hope that it's just a day delayed and we'll see the stuff on monday but um if something happens to where the order didn't end up going in we won't see the parts until tuesday so kind of a bummer but at any rate it is what it is well what we're gonna do now is we're gonna throw this swing arm slash sway bar assembly into the 900 here but before we go and do that we have a rodent problem in the combine and we've had this problem for a couple of years the damn mice have gotten into the seats uh two years ago there was a bunch of garbage up on the top of the headliner i did a video on that when we cleaned that out and when i got done uh with wheat was it when i got done with wheat last year or was it when i got done with corn i actually I think it was when i got done with corn the combine was parked for like four days or something like that and i went to move it out of the way and the mice had gotten into the seat in just that short amount of time that it was parked so i've seen these um units here these are actual five gallon pail traps i ended up buying a couple of them and the idea of this trap is you know they you're gonna we're gonna put some bait on this little uh teeter-totter board here and the idea is, is the mice are going to climb up this ramp here they're going to go over to uh this platform they're going to go in on this platform go to grab the bait and they're going to be going to slide down into the pail a friend of mine from wisconsin he uh gave me the idea to try these and i've seen them uh advertised or i've seen little videos on youtube and oh facebook every once in a while you see advertisements for these so i ended up picking this up a couple of these up on amazon for i don't know what the heck they were 10 12 bucks a piece or something so we're going to bait it with some Skippy peanut butter. And before we do that, we're going to go ahead and install some uh, <laughs> a blue window washer fluid. Uh, Big Murph, he uh, drives truck for us every now and again. He gave me the idea to use uh, washer fluid. And then that is going to do a couple of things. One, it's not going to freeze on you. Two, um, once the uh, little rodent falls into the solution or whatever you have in the pail he's not going to live too long because he's going to end up drowning and if you use the uh, window washer fluid um, it'll cut down on the actual odor so we're going to go ahead and bait that i'm going to put a second one together and throw one in the shop here just to kind of keep an eye on it for a few days and we'll put this pail here up in the cab we'll show you what they have done uh, to this cab here, or to this the seats, they ripped up this seat here, and uh, they have pulled most of the insulation out of the seat, and they have used it for their nest. You can see there's a little bit of stuff right there. They've been in here uh, overnight. Um, and then, of course, there was a bunch of corn and wheat and stuff up above the headliner i have put dryer sheets in here bounce dryer sheets I actually got a couple of them stuffed right there um and that didn't that didn't deter them at all and i even had uh bait pouches in here um i had them little they look like little potpourri bags they're only good for like a month i tried them they ate those within a couple weeks uh time and them um, uh, little green bricks, I threw a bunch of them in here. They ate all that. So um, I guess we have no choice than to uh, put that bait pail in here and uh, trap them and get rid of them that way. The only other thing we could do is have the combine 
bombed with something uh, the rodent control companies they they've got something that you can treat the combine treat a machine with I think and that will uh, get rid of them as well so let's go ahead and bait this pail here and get some window washer fluid dumped in there and we'll put this up in the cab and then I'm gonna put another one together um, and just kind of throw it in the shop here well we are actually into the next day and we've got the 900 all put back together we put the uh, linkage slash sway bar in we switched over the uh, straight pipes we've got the mufflers back on there I had to replace a power steering hose and um, we just got to go through and adjust the brakes here we've got them backed right off and once we air this up we'll be able to adjust the brakes the wheels are all torqued we do need to get this washed however uh, right now we just um, basically need to get it out the door and get the next project in here so being it's the next day we'll go ahead and check this trap that is up in the combine here I checked it earlier and there was four critters dead down in the uh, container here so what do we got one two three yeah there's four in there so if I can get this flashlight to shine in there and then yeah four so um we're gonna go ahead and uh leave that alone and we're gonna see if we can get a few more contestants to try out the uh, five gallon pail trap there so that is gonna about do it for this video we'll show you what this sounds like now that it's nice and quiet again nice a lot nicer quiet <laughs> so um we'll pull this out and that is gonna do it for this video stay tuned to see what we are going to be working on next here Take it easy and thanks for watching folks. We'll catch you at the next one.